Joining me on Startup Report today is Amit Ramsmer and Chris Bascucci. Good to be here. Thanks. Thank you. Take a moment to appreciate getting both names right first try. That was, <laughs> yeah. that was first take. So first take. Yeah. So uh, nine shots. We 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 haven't. Uh, you're our first alcoholic beverage on Startup Report. So uh, that's good. We're, we're starting to I'll take yeah, that. Get exciting here. Um, it's crowded space. Sure. Why 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 nine shots? But there's a huge hole in it. I mean, realistically, there's a, a market within the beverage industry that they call RTD, ready to drink. So in the U.S. alone, the beverage industry is probably about 25 billion, mm -hmm. and RTDs is five billion of that, and it's basically a, a an uncrowded yeah. space of the beverage market. Right. Right. So you know, we looked at all the demos and and tried to find a hole that we could fill with the product that wasn't existing. And here we are, you know, a couple of years later with the product that, you know, fits in that space. And if we can get, you know, one or 2% of that market, sure. that's still a hundred million dollar company. It's not bad. Yeah. Big goal. But, you know, I think especially with the, the other beverages that are in that space, we've got a shot, you know, yeah. we really, a shot. Yeah, not All right, on so purpose. Let's, let's dig into <laughs> to, to what it is exactly. Yeah, so what makes it unique. we are offering a, a new form factor. Let's say it's the 50 mil. So it's the same size as what you'd get on the airplane. But it comes in our cool shot glass with a pull ring. So you can pop that out and shoot it. And they're pre-mixed. Every one of our beverages, we have nine flavors. And so you can get a box that has all nine flavors. But they're all the same proof. So it's a standard, you know, 40 proof across the beverage line. And it's just a, you know, really cool product. And talk about uh, Nine Shots. Where did you come up with the name? Obviously, the packing would lend right. itself to that. All right. So Nine Shots in one box and it just kind of that's not a challenge it's right not a challenge. <laughs> no, 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 no. Okay. i mean i do not, you can't legally say that but you know i'm sure that's going to come out eventually but you know it's i wanted something that was going to pack easily for shipping and logistics and whatever so you know i i came up with this form factor and the problem was is nobody had any kind of bottles we had to design all this right. from scratch so i'm yeah, working very uniquely shaped engineers bottle. from you know tricor braun out of chicago an engineer from China, Taiwan, put this together. It's the same company that does like L'Oreal and Victoria's Secret. So it's a really cool, you know, this box folds up by itself. All they have to do is snap it together. So, you know, we're thinking of all these things about how long is this going to take to put together in the factory? Right. You know, I don't want to build a product that is, you know, relatively quick to fulfill orders. So you mentioned you saw a hole in the ready to drink market. Right. What how would you describe that? What was what was the what were the specifics of that hole? Uh, it's um the products that are out there. Yeah. The competitors are just not delivering this level of quality. Okay. Right. So when when you go and you pick up one of the, the pre-made shots and you you have to pull a foil, a foil top off like right. a yogurt lid. Yeah. It feels not like the, the kind the kind of experience you want, right? Got it. Now, a lot of one of the the key factors in delivering a great product is get, is getting that feeling, right? When you're as you're utilizing the product, you, you need to feel like it's premium. Sure. Right? And that's what we went forward with this. Yeah. In a crowded market, branding plays a huge role in the success of the, of the product. Amit right. mentioned that, the quality experience of it. Uh, so what, were, what was your thinking process going into the branding yeah. of it? And what position did you want to hold sure. in the market? So in the market already, there's a probably four or five competitors that are in this space. And if you look at those competitors, it, they're not quality products. They're they fill a void in the market, but they're, they're quick and easy. They're quick hits. Right. They want quick hits, hits right? right? We we want long long term longevity. We want to build an actual brand. Right. Right. So we want to show, you know, this is a higher quality product. It's a different kind of demographic maybe we're looking for. Right. Maybe a different, a more mature buyer. Mm -hmm. And that's why we want to present it the way it is. Right. right? I mean, it's still gonna sell probably to the college age crowd. Right. But, you know, I, I followed the Coca-Cola playbook. I, I looked at some of these branding experts. And that's why, you know, our bottle has the shape that it has. You know, I wanted something that was going to be recognizable beyond a test tube or a, a shot it's glass. It's fun to hold, too. I yeah, guess. and they're fun to hold. It's got good, you know, this lid was actually designed with mouth feel in mind yeah. so that it, it feels like a quality product. And if you go, you know, say you walk through a Total Wine or an ABC Liquor right now, they have a shelf of RTD products. And they blend in. Like, you you wouldn't know that that was a, a different type of product. So what we've designed, you know, especially with this retail pack, you know, this is kind of designed to be in store and then we'll sell these in stores, but this is really for the bars, nightclubs, cruise ships, airlines, the single serves. 
So, so it's, it's kind of like that classic example of the big the big gorillas in the market right, or the yeah. big players in the market do it the old school way. All right. And that gives you the chance to come in and innovate and, right. do, and do it anyway. Correct. Right. Well, the, some of the big players are, are starting to get into RTDs now. They are. I mean, Anheuser-Busch is releasing one this year for next summer. You know, they want to be the big summer drink. Yeah. And it's going to be a honey-based liqueur, I believe, is what they're... So they're, at this point, they're throwing spaghetti at the wall to see what sticks. And like I said, we've done the research. I've got the business plan showing, you know, where this market exists, the hole in this market. And the cool thing is by having multiple flavors, we A, can offer a mix pack. Mm -hmm. So you can get nine different flavors, figure out what you like. And then we offer this in individual flavor packs. So we've got a purple box and a pink box and a blue box that have the different flavors. Mm -hmm. So on the shelf, that's going to look really cool. Yeah. It's going to be something, you know, that people see. It's going to catch Attention their eye. On, yeah. And real estate. with my advisory board, you know, I worked with some pretty heavy industry hitters. Mm -hmm. There's a company in Central Florida called uh, Florida Caribbean Distillers. That's who makes some of our alcohol. But they've got, you know, people that work with them that are very fluent in the industry. And the very first meeting I had with him years and years and years ago, he's like, you need a handle on your box. I'm like, well, you know what? He's like, because subconsciously people will be like, oh, and just pick it up. Yeah. And that's your first step. If you can get the product in somebody's hand and they look at it, oh, I'll, you know, I'll right. buy that. Yeah, that's great. Such an insane amount of nuance in this, in this type of, uh, you know, from the shelf experience. It and is. So let's, you mentioned flavors. Let's start there. Yeah. We'll, how, how, did, how was the flavor mix developed and uh, what was, what, how, unpack how that all came to be? <laughs> My childhood. Um, <laughs> the burdens and... <laughs> yeah, it's, you know, there's... I didn't want the sex on the beach and the kamikaze and the cosmopolitan, the drinks that are out there. So we've created a line of proprietary flavors, you know, and the ones that we have done previous to launch, like I've created all of these in, a, in my kitchen, basically, or I give a flavor chemist very specific requirements of what we're looking for. And now that, you know, Ameth is on board, he's going to bring some of the Caribbean flavor into, you know, our product lineups. But I, I, I found things that I liked, you know, so, you know, there's Kool-Aid flavors that are fun. There's, you know, icy, uh, what's it called? The, uh, like Italian ice. So if you take those kinds of potent flavors and mix those together. That's kind of how our flavors are based. Right. Yeah. And then we moved on from that and said, okay, well, what can we do, you know, with different base mixtures? So we got introduced to this company that does dairy and it's, it's the largest dairy cooperative in Europe. It's called Friesland Campina. And in the U S they have a branch called creamy creations and they have some of the best chemists that we've ever run into. They, I, I'll give him a, a sheet of just examples of things that I like, and he'll come back with some, you know, not ready made flavors, but at least to have an idea of where we want to go. So yeah. I said, I wanted a, like a Girl Scout cookie, you know, <laughs> like a, a thin mint, something on right. that chocolate, you know, cause I like those. You weren't kidding about like the that. childhood. Yeah, <laughs> thin mints and Kool-Aid and ice. Exactly. And exactly. Boy Scout right exactly. there. Yeah. Boy Scout, yeah. <laughs> I did sell. So, yeah. But uh, he made this flavor for us. And it's, it's our, it's called US Mint is the flavor. And it's a dark chocolate peppermint cream martini. And it is like, I've seen people drink this and just like eyebrows go up. We uh, went and did a tasting at Total Wine. And we did Naples and Fort Myers. You know, so these guys taste every single beverage that comes out. It's their job. Right. So we went in, we had a table, we did a pouring. And I think I poured 145 shots in an hour. I mean, I had people lined up. Wow. And so the manager was watching. He's like, you know, Total Wine has been looking for something like this. And we've kind of soft pitched them. But since the product wasn't really, you know, ready for market yet, we've, you know, we'll go back to them. But they took us in the back room after we got done. And he's like, I want my distilled spirits manager to taste this. And this guy comes in and he, he's like, that's one of the best things I've ever had. And he's drinking, you know, $1,300 cognacs and 50-year-old yeah. wines and all that stuff. So bright red, like I'm embarrassed, but it was great <laughs> to have that, you know, interaction with them. So you, you're innovating in flavors, you're innovating in packaging. Right. How are you innovating outside of the physical? What are you, how are you innovating in, in competing with some of the big budgets to yeah. mark, to market out to the so world? So th that's kind of why I'm, I'm trying to come on board. <laughs> <laughs> why so, he is on board? Right. There's a, um, well, I'm on board. Yeah. So we're trying to go lean, right? We're trying to build this team as lean as possible. Mm -hmm. So looking at the way, um, the, the manufacturers and distillers would work mm -hmm. and trying to automate and integrate technologies together to deliver the product in a more technical fashion and a, a standard deliver would be able to do it. So working with the American Spirits Exchange, we looked at some of the software that they're doing 
and trying to see if that that will fit our, our our product design right. and our delivery times, and understanding that process and integrating that ahead of time before we before we get off from launch, right? understanding end to end what it's going to take to deliver this and the software component that's involved in that. So he comes from an IT background. I can and tell. That's specifically why he was hired for this position. So he's president slash CIO. Got it. So he can figure out logistics and work with these companies and. The liquor industry is, it's a huge, 1.4 trillion worldwide. So he said American Spirits Exchange, that is a company who specifically develops software and lending practices for the beverage industry, alcoholic beverage industry yeah. specifically, but they also warehouse, they do a lot of things they to help. help licensing in help different states. Licensing. I mean, they're, they're going to allow us to be very lean. Right. So it's, it's like we're vendor managing some of this process, yep. right? To allow us to focus really on product and delivery, right? But but where we have shortcomings in, we can fill with, with vendors that'll help us do that, that are recognized in the industry, that know what they're doing. Right. And the company was set up like that from the get-go. Right. Right. So defined, like, I don't want to go buy a $20 million plant or a, a million and a half dollar bottling line when I can sub this out to a company that specializes in that, helps our bottom line, helps their bottom line. And it's a great position for us. We're using a company out of Cocoa Beach called Mango Bottling. Mm-hmm. And they make, there's a test tube drink, which mm-hmm. you may have seen out in the mm-hmm. bars and nightclubs. So they've been doing that product for over 20 years. They're in 38 states. So, you know, we've got the sales data from them. We know it's a successful yeah. brand. If we can improve upon that, you know. They, they, they love this product. They, they, they want to sell it. Right. So they're ready for it. And what about from the marketing front? How do you compete against the big budgets? Grassroots, man. It's uh, the Instagram, the... Yeah. Yeah. So, so social media and technology is going to be our, our key leverage there, right? So we have to we have to build the brand first. We have to get the product out, get the flavors right. Make sure we're we're speaking to the why of people. So right. when you're selling something that's not a well-known name, you have to you have to reach the why, and that's why his his flavors are built the way they are. So a flavor or or, or a taste or sensation that brings back your childhood is a really easy thing to sell with, right? Once you sure. once you hit that 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 taste of flavor right, person like wow, I could buy this, right? Yeah. And so incorporating that with social media is going to be our key selling point. Right. And looking at all the demographics and the data, like, again, data driven, it, we've got to yeah. figure out where products are selling, how they're selling, what kind of money needs to go flavors, into that market. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Have a lot of founders that watch the show. So I'd be remiss if we didn't dig into the company a little bit. You said Absolutely. six years you've been rolling. So tell me More about that, the, the, yeah. the, the evolution of yeah. the, the company was actually founded in 2003. Wow. And it took me, I know that's, that's almost a bad word in this <laughs> industry, in the, in the lending field, but. You know, I needed to learn the industry. I, I come from sales and advertising, which is great because that fits perfectly. Almost my entire career history is has geared me up for launching this product. But, you know, like I said, it took me about six years and I was working. I was selling cars. I was doing some other stuff and wrote the business plan. And then we started going to the liquor shows. You know, there's a big, the industry is called Wine and Spirit Wholesalers of America, Industry uh, Trade Association. Mm-hmm. So WSWA. And they have a show every year. It's in Vegas, Orlando, Vegas, Orlando. So we started going to these shows just to meet the players and get our name out there. Mm-hmm. And we've had some pretty good response. I mean, the first couple of years we went, we just met with distributors and, you know, started getting introductions to, you know, different states. And after probably the fourth year, I, I think we, I was comfortable with, who we'd met. And so I was like, it's time to really start pushing this product. Yeah. And we had growing pains. I mean, I'll be completely honest. It, this is not an easy industry to break into. Definitely. And it's expensive. I mean, learning mean, to execute in this, this industry right. is, is, right. is expensive. Right. So the way he did it, he, he didn't spend as much money as you could have sure. failing at it. Right. Yeah. And then learning from it. Right. right. So, and you hear a lot of uh, entrepreneurs and, and business leaders say, oh, well, get that, pro- get the product out there. You can always fix it later. This industry is not like that. It really isn't. I've seen, I can't even count how many products I've seen come to market at a show, be out of business two years later and have spent $2 million Mm -hmm. of somebody else's money. You know, I saw a product launch at the show probably three or four years ago. The party they threw at the liquor show was about $250,000. Wow. Just burning cash, burning cash, burning cash. So, you know, that's where we ended up. Okay. So you then... You're, you're coming up with the flavors. You're, you're working with the, the, the packagers, the chemists, whatever, to develop the product. You've got you working. And at this point, you're kind of just bootstrapping that solo. Right. And then when did Emmett, did you come in? Oh, yeah. Yeah. So uh, it's been five months. Yeah. Five months yeah. officially, but we've worked together for about two, two years. years. Yeah. Two yeah. years. Yeah. So we, we met at a previous employer. 
um he was a vendor there whatever yep and um and we you know we 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 sort of had chemistry together working together understood logistics slash emotional understanding of how things are built yep. how products are built people process product right. you know understanding what what makes a business successful right and we we had similar ideas on how that worked and he's worked in silicon valley so he's seen both sides you know companies that work really well and companies that don't work really well so yeah the inners of of those companies are it's a very good place to learn right you see a lot of mistakes and a lot of things you can learn from and it was fun and um and you know just getting to know him and seeing his drive and seeing all the things that he's about I have very similar ideas yeah and it just became a natural fit and honestly it was very organic I was down in South Florida. He, that's where he's from. And I knew I wanted him involved in some aspect. And he was helping. He was doing some just some different things. And I'm like, you know what? I just need to make you president of the company. Yeah. He was like, what? <laughs> <laughs> Wasn't expecting that. So he discussed it with his wife and, you know, went for a couple of days. Well, I mean, and, he used to come over to my house a lot to hang out and right. talk about ideas, right? Yeah. right. And it's not only, not only Nine Shots ideas. It's like, you know, what's NASA doing right now? Right. What's Elon doing right now? Right. Seeing big, the big thinking yeah, stuff, seeing where, where the world is changing, how how the demographics of the world and the ideas in the world are changing, and how we can fit in in that in that whole plan of things, right? And um and how I, our ideas can be part of it. And then at some point, it just became natural for us to talk about this, and natural for me to work on it, and natural for me to give advice and do research on how to improve things, right? right? And network and and brainstorm on things, right. and it just it's a right. natural fit, yeah, right? So. Yeah. And raising wise, are you, is that in the future or is it? Is it? It's now. It's now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, like he said, I you know I, I shoestring this yeah. as far as possible. I think we've spent you know about three hundred at this point, which, in the grand scheme of things, in this industry, is not that much. Right. And I credit a lot of that to my advisory board. You know, I've, I've got people that have been very adamant with me about where to spend the money, where not to spend the money, and we've had a lot of you know, like I said, it's been a long process, but. You wouldn't believe the government approval. I mean, you would, but yeah. <laughs> with this situation that we're you know dealing with, is the TTB is our regulating body, Tax and Trade Bureau. So everything you do, you know, the little label that says pregnant women shouldn't drink and all that, I'll get a change order from them before they'll approve a little approval label that says like make government warning in a bolder font. Yeah. Okay, easy. But then you have to resubmit nine flavors. Mm. So every time something was happening, it was taking six months or seven months to get a response back. So. It was a struggle, but, you know, we're done, we're clear, everything's approved, and we're ready to launch. I mean, literally, we've got distributors waiting, we've got retailers waiting, we've got people to get back in front of. And, you know, at this point, I think it's... Yeah, the, the burdens are out of the way, and now right. we're in the hope stage. All right, 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 right. right. <laughs> we did all the burdens, though. It's, 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 the hard work is done, the heavy lifting is done. <laughs> and granted, there's going to be more work right. to launch the product and whatever, but that, I feel is what we've looked forward to, you know, so we need to raise the money and the money is for inventory, sure. you know, because it's, I'm not launching a, a, a single glass bottle of vodka that I can probably spend 50 or hundred thousand dollars and buy, you know, 40 pallets. Right. This is a huge operation. Yep. It, the, logistically, we've got nine flavors, you know, millions of bottles. It, you know, when you think a case of our product is 90 of these little bottles right. and a case of wine is 12, then the numbers start, you know, making themselves apparent. That's it's a lot of logistics and you know, working in the factory and finding warehousing space. You know, it's it's a lot of work. But again, with his assistance and American Spirits Exchange and the logistics, we'll get there. What will they retail at? A dollar ninety nine for this, which undercuts all the competition. Right. And then eighteen bucks for this. I mean, it's nine shots for eighteen bucks. You you can't go buy two shots in a bar for eighteen bucks. <laughs> so, you know, we're really trying to hit a market with a premium product. At a very fair price, that has really good taste and obviously some attractive I, 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 qualities. I personally think alcohol consumption is kind of changing this in it this is. country. Mm -hmm. People are not looking to get drunk, right? They're just looking for a light, light buzz. You want a couple of quick hits and you know and go go their way because there's other things to do also, right? So, um, I, and I, I think appealing to that crowd is what this is about, right. right? And we can sell this. I mean, the big perk with something like this is we can sell this product where nobody else can because of this lid. The federal government allows us to put a barcode on here. So I can sell these individually right. where everybody else has legally has to come Even in an overpack. Yeah. And yeah, a liquor store may break that open and sell them on the counter. They can get fined for that. Not that it probably happens a lot, but I can go to Royal Caribbean. I can go to Southwest. You go to Royal Caribbean Island and you have one of these just hanging on an ice bucket somewhere yeah. and you can grab it up. And, yeah. Oh man, that's easy. Yeah. That is easy. Yeah. And they're the same. So this alcohol in this, every one of our flavors, like I said, is 40 proof. 
So this bottle is the same amount of alcohol as a 12 ounce beer or a five ounce pour of wine. So they call it an industry standard pour. And we did that purposely to not, you know, get too much scrutiny from the federal government because some products have come out that have been real Over high proof, proof yeah. and That's not a, they've had to remove them. Right. I mean, Anheuser-Busch had a product years ago called Spikes. They ser served them at Gasparilla and the federal government was like, it looks like, A, you're marketing towards kids and there was real high proof. And then they were supposed to be made to mix with beer mm. so that you could spike your beer Got was it. the uh, origin of that. But people were buying them as shots and the Fed was like, eh, you know, so. So there's, there's some value and ethics in, involved right, in it, right? Sure. Understanding what you're selling and what's it affect, does it, what it also does bring to the, to the human potential and what it does, right? And designing about the right proof, the right bottle for all that involved, yeah. I've enjoyed hearing about the company. Six years is a long time. Congratulations on you this far. Congrats, <laughs> congratulations on the partnership. And yeah, absolutely. We'll look forward to uh, watching your success. I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you so much.